In this video, I'm going to share with you the seven skills and strategies I inculcated to get 8.5 in the IELTS listening test. The motivation behind this video is that I've got out some people reaching out to me that they couldn't make it in the listening test. And to me, I believe that um, considering the fourth aspect of the IELTS, the listening test is the easiest and as a matter of fact, anyone who sits for IELTS should be able to um, sail through or conquer the listening test once and for all. So, um, getting to know that some people who still have issues with the listening test, I think I have to come up and share these seven strategies that got me 8.5 in this aspect of the test. So, if you are interested in this video, then come with me. Welcome back. I believe you are still here because you want to hear the good news I have for you with regards to attain 8.5 in the listening test. You see, um, if you are new on this channel, what I do is that I talk about IELTS, nursing abroad, and lifestyle. I will entreat you to subscribe to my YouTube channel to be part of the family. And uh, to do that, I would want you to subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button right under this video. And for YouTube to notify you of all uploads, you just have to click the notification bell close to the subscribe button. And then when you do that, what you've done is that you'll be notified of all videos I upload. So to make this video very easy and then comprehensible, I'll be probably turning size. I'll be going onto the board to help you understand all these seven strategies and skills that helped me attain 8.5 in the listening test. So let's go and then look at that. So here I'm going to enlighten you on the IELTS listening test. If you are new to this season, IELTS is actually an English language test and uh, it consists of four main tests, which is the writing, the listening, the reading, and the uh, speaking test. And as part of that, I'm going to enlighten you about the listening test. I'll be sharing with you the seven strategies that got me 8.5, I mean band 8.5, in this aspect of the test. So, um, without wasting much time, I would want to um, take you around past reading and tables with regards to the listening test. You might be new to this exams, and I can't just go about talking about the seven strategies that um, got me this band score. So, for you to get the actual concept, I want to let you know that um, listening test in the IELTS is um, it's a very simple test um, you can easily pass because among all the four, I consider that to be the easiest. Now here you'll be listening to an audio message, an audio conversation. I mean between two people or more and uh, you have a paper in front of you with some gaps left for you to provide answers. So you'll be listening between two people or more. So um, you have a headset on and uh, whatever you hear, if the answer is, let's say concentration, you just have to write the answer, concentration. So um, with the listening test, it comes in two forms. You can do the paper-based IELTS listening test or you can do the computer-based. Now, as I don't mention, the paper-based, you have a paper in front of you with some gaps that's for you to provide answers whilst you listen to the audio. And uh, with the computer base, you'll be doing the questions on the computer. But I still have to listen to the audio through a headset and then provide answers. I mean, type the answers. So this is good for people who are good at typing. I mean, who are good at using the computer. But since I have used paper all my life, or since I have written exams, I mean, paper-based exams all my life, I felt I had to go for the paper-based test. And uh, that was what I was comfortable with. So um, the listening test comes in four parts. So we have the part one. We have the part two, the part three, and then the part four. Now, the listening test increases in order of difficulty. So what this means is that uh, part one is easier than part two, part two is easier than part three, and part three is easier than part four. In the general impression, part four is the most difficult, and part one is the easiest. I shouldn't worry because there are strategies to help you get them right and that is what I'll be sharing them with you in this um, IELTS classroom teaching. So now, uh, what I want to let you know is that for me, even though it is said that the listening test increases in order of difficulty, I felt that I had a stronger hold at the part 1 and in the part 4. So I only had issues with the 2 and 3 but along the line, I discovered ways of dealing with that. So I'll be sharing that with you in a separate video. So now, each part has got 10 questions. For you to answer so part one has got 10 questions part two has got 10 questions part three has got 10 questions and part four has got 10 questions as well so in general sense you will answer 40 questions in the listening test and there is 40 questions but i require to use 30 minutes now you are supposed to write your answers on the question paper 
So you write your answers on your question paper, after which you'll be given um, 10 minutes to transfer the answers on the question paper to an answer booklet. The reason is that you, see, you answer the questions while the audio is playing. And as a matter of fact, you can't write legibly or with clarity. Pause, you listen, and then write your answers. So usually you write sharply on the question paper, after which you transfer your answers neatly on the answer booklet. And you are required to use 10 minutes. So now I also want to let you know that um, it is very easy to get band 9 in the listening test because you have to answer 40 questions and uh, each question carries one mark there's no half mark for a question if you are wrong you are wrong so getting 38 to badly 40 can earn you um, band 8.5 to band 9 so me getting 8.5 meant that i had somewhere between 38 39 um the iot is marked between a band score of zero to band 9 where band 9 is the highest score and then 0 is the lowest score so you take note it's easy for you to get band 9 in the listening test because you've got 40 questions and should you get all the 40 questions correct you are good to go well with the listening test as i said i've got some strategies to share with you and uh, these are the strategies that got me 8.5 let's go and let me show you the strategies that got me 8.5 in the listening test so, the first strategy I'll be talking to you about that didn't help me get band 8.5 in the IELTS listening test is to know the various question types that come under the listening test. You see, it takes time for the eyes to adapt to a new environment. Now, because the listening test is something new to you, you can't just, I mean, get up and then go into it. Before you start even the practice, you should get yourself and familiarize with the various types of questions that you'll be answering. So for example, you may meet questions like multiple choice in the listening test. You may meet questions like um, feelings. So this is where they will leave gaps for you to I mean, put in certain answers based on the audio you hear. You may also meet questions like matching. You may meet questions like map completion. So this is where um, a map will be drawn for you and in the audio, they will be given a direction and uh, this, um, the, the directions will be marked with alphabet and it's up to you to um, get the directions right and put the answers there based on what you hear in the audio. I'll be demonstrating this to you in my subsequent um, video. You can also meet um, questions like um, summary completion. So you get to know all this in my subsequent video. So before you get your listening test right, or before you aim at getting 8.5 in the listening test, you should familiarize yourself with all these question types because it will be very, very dangerous for you to not meet any of these questions in your practice session. And on the D-Day, you will meet any of these. Probably you will be found wanting. The reason why you have to familiarize yourself with the question types is that each one has a strategy you have to use to get the answers right. So just get yourself used to I mean, there are, I think, three or four inclusive. Just try and then get yourself used to these question types. At least before you go to the exam room, you should have practiced any of these question types. So now, the second strategy I want you to take notice of is to um, actually build your concentration skills. Why do I say build your concentration skills? Because most people who usually fail the listening test um, lose concentration along the way. And you know, the problem is that once you listen to the audio, you write your answers alongside. When you discover an answer in the audio, the audio doesn't pause for you to write the answer. You answer your questions alongside you listening to the audio. So your ability to concentrate on the audio and then getting your answer is key here. So anyone who has got a good concentration skill has the ability of passing IELTS listening test. So what I want to say is that um, to actually build your concentration skills, there are some things I would recommend you to. First of all, I would recommend that you listen to or I mean CNN on the radio or on TV trust much as possible to be listening to I mean English messages you can also listen to um, podcasts in English this helps build your concentration skills you can also listen to I mean English music you can also watch movies with subtitles I mean English movies with subtitles 
So these are ways to um, build your concentration skills. Because if you don't have your concentration skills, you won't be able to actually focus on what the audio is saying and then you provide your answers as such. So English movies with subtitles. Now, to be able to know whether you have the concentration skills, all you have to do is that once you listen to any of these, being in the podcast, the music or whatever, in the middle of the audio, you pause and then try to remember and see what you have heard in the audio so far. Now, if you're able to produce or say something about whatever you heard in the audio, then it means that you have got some concentration skills. And as a matter of fact, um, it will help you in your listening skills. The third strategy I would want to talk to you about is the keyword technique. The keyword technique. If there's anything in the listening test that didn't help me pass, then I'll say it's a keyword technique. You see, this is the ability to identify certain words on the question paper that cannot be paraphrased or changed in the audio. You see, once you listen to the audio, I don't mention that you have to answer the questions as such. Now, there are some keywords on the question paper that cannot be paraphrased. And uh, when I say paraphrase, what I mean is that um, these words cannot be changed. So they can't be changed on the question paper and in the audio. So in other words, um, you hear the same words in the audio and you can see that same word on the question paper. Now, the importance of this is that um, the key words are actually landmarks. Now, they are landmarks. That tell you where the audio has gotten to. There are times you may miss your way in the audio. I mean, you lose concentration and it's like, ah, where has this audio got into? So once you're able to spot a keyword, it actually tells you where the audio has got into. So it is your keywords that will serve as the landmarks for you to get your answers on the question paper. So that is very, very important. So if you are lost in the listening test, it is one or two keywords that can help you locate where the audio has got into. So some examples of keywords that you might meet in the audio as well as on the um, question paper may include one, names of a person. So the name you see on the question paper might be the same name the audio will mention. So there, once the audio mentions that name, it tells you that this is where the audio has got into. And you are able to track the conversation as such. So it can be a name like Tracy, Bismarck. So these names cannot be paraphrased. I mean, there are no way that's anonymous to these names. So as it is on the question paper, so it will be in the audio. There can also be keywords like names of places. So for example, Australia, Everest. So these are specific names to certain specific places or things. And as a matter of fact, they cannot be changed. So as it is on the question paper, so it will be in the audio. So once you see Australia on the question paper, and then you hear Australia in the audio, it tells you that this is where the audio has got into. And that I must prepare getting an answer to maybe the next question. Keywords can also be names of months. So for example, December, December cannot be paraphrased as it is on the question paper, so it will be in the audio. Names, I mean dates, maybe 15th August 1998. This cannot be paraphrased it is, as it is on the question paper, so it will be in the audio. So you use these things to track where the audio has got into. That's why I say that the keywords are landmarks that guide you as to where the audio has got into. Maybe times you may miss your way in the audio, but it's up to you to locate the keyword to help you know where the audio has got into, so that you follow as such. So your keyword technique might be very, very good. Otherwise, you are likely to get something lesser than band seven. So people who have good keyword techniques are able to maneuver their way through the listening test. Even if they miss their way, they're able to locate where the audio has got into. And as a matter of fact, they get the remaining answers right. So just make sure that uh, one of the strategies you need is the keyword technique. This is very important. This is one of the uh, strategies that did help me get 8.5 in the listening test. So moving on to the fourth skill or the fourth strategy to attain band 8.5 in the listening test, I would want to introduce to you what I call the ascent mastery. You may be wondering what is ascent mastery? The ascent here is um, a distinctive mode of pronunciation of a language. So it's actually the mode of pronunciation.
of a language. In other words, it is how certain words are pronounced. So in the listening test, you may come across about um, four accents. So you may come across the UK accent. You may come across the um, Indian accent. You may come across the Australian accent. And then the American accent. So what this means is that um, the IELTS listening test has a conglomeration of um, about two or three accents. It might happen that a UK um, person is speaking to an Australian man. I mean, and each one of them has got a way of pronouncing their words. So it's up to you to familiarize yourself with all these accents so that as and when um, your answer is pronounced, you'll be able to give the correct spelling to um, whatever word that was mentioned. So all I want to let you know is that um, each one of these has I mean, different ways of pronouncing words. So for example, if let's say in the audio test, uh, one of your answer was let's say priority. Now, this word may be pronounced differently based on who is speaking. If it's an Indian man, the pronunciation will be different. If it's an Australian man, the pronunciation will be different. If it's an American, the pronunciation will be different. If the person is from the UK, the pronunciation will be different. Usually, people from the UK pronounce words ending in TY as priority. Priority. So something like this. That's how a person from the UK will pronounce. So someone from um, the India will pronounce it differently. So your ability to get to know how these people pronounce their words will go along with to help you spell the word right. So that's the most important thing here. So um, how do you master your accent? Um, there are probably um, just one way to suggest to you, and that is what I did, and it did help me get 8.5. Now, in the listening test, because I mastered my accent right, I could identify who was speaking, whether the person was from the UK, the person was an Indian, Australian, or American. So this strategy I'm going to show you works. Now, to be able to master the accent, I would suggest that you watch movies. So now, what type of movies are you supposed to watch? Now, watch movies that are pertaining to Indian or watch Indian movies, watch Australian movies, watch American movies, watch UK movies with subtitles, and then listen attentively to how they pronounce certain words. How a word is pronounced might be different in terms of, I mean, the accent for these four people. So just watch movies that pertains to these people. And as and when you watch, you get to familiarize yourself with your accent. So let's say if a word like concentration is your answer in the audio, once it is pronounced by an Indian man, you know that the answer is still concentration. Once it is pronounced by an American man, you know that the answer is still concentration. So you just have to take note of that. The next strategy I'm going to talk to you about is the spelling skills. The spelling skills. You see, most people fail IELTS because, I mean, the IELTS listening test because they fail to spell the, I mean, words rightly. So, for example, if you have a word, like, I mean, your answer is um, environment. And that this word isn't spelled correctly. Definitely, in listening test, there's no half a mark. You should take note of that. It's either you are marked right or you are marked wrong. So if you can't spell environment, definitely you may. I mean, you may have the idea. You may know that the answer is environment, but because it's spelled wrongly, you may have it. I mean, wrong. So you just have to take note. Build on your spelling skills. Read a lot of books. Watch movies with subtitles. And I believe that it will go a long way to help you. As part of building your spelling skills, you're able to take notice of details. So for example, if they give, I mean, in the audio, you hear a sentence like The boys came to eat their food So now, on the question paper, assuming that um, they've left a gap here for you to provide the answer So, the boys came to eat their food You know the answer is boys And in the course of writing the answer Instead of boys, you wrote boy. So because you didn't bring the S, you are wrong in this instance. So you should be able to take notice of details, the singular and the plural. Whatever there is S, make sure that if you are writing, you add your S. And wherever there is no S, make sure you exempt the S. So you take note of those details. They are all part of the spelling skills. Because as I said, there is no half a mark in the listening skills. It's either you are getting it right or you are getting it wrong. So your, your spelling skills is very very important and uh, you meet different ways if um, you keep on reading books if you keep on watching movies with subtitles you keep on listening to i mean english podcasts and all those things i mean whatever new word you come across try to get the meaning of that word as well as the spellings and uh, 
it all boils down to the accent master. If you're able to decipher who is speaking, you'll be able to give out the correct spelling of whatever word that is mentioned. So basically, build on your spelling skills when it comes to the IELTS listening test. The next strategy I would want you to take notice of is the shorthand skills. What do I mean by that? You see, there is the ability to write longer words in a short form that is easy to remember. As I long mentioned, you see, once the audio plays, it is required of you to write your answers as such. I mean, write your answers alongside the audio. So now, what happens here is that um, it might po be possible that your answer is, let's say, government. So now, this word is very long to the extent that um, trying to write all this um, in full would mean that the audio would have probably surpassed the answer to the next question. So what do you have to do? You have to stick to using the shorthand. And that is why I refer to as the shorthand skills. The ability to write longer ways in a short form. That is easily to remember it. So remember I told you that um, you have to write your answers on the question paper and then you'll be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers onto the answer booklet. So once you write on the answer paper, you should try as much as possible to write use the shorthand so that you can write fast and then move on to get the answer for the next question. So for example, government like this, it is the answer. Um, I'll write it in a short form as let's say G O V apostrophe T on the question paper. Now, if I'm transferring my answer from the question paper to the answer booklet, I don't have to write it like this. I have to give the correct spelling because this is not a recognized English word. So I have to use the correct spelling. But this is necessary because it helps you write your answer fast so that you get to think of the answer for the next question. So the shorthand skills also helps in the listening test. If you always want to write your longer answers in full, then I would want to assure you that um, you'll miss most of your answers because by the time you are done writing all these answers, um, the audio had mentioned the um, subsequent answers to your questions. Another example I can give you is that, let's say the answer is Christmas. How can you write this long word in a short form? You know, Christmas is X, M, E, S. So once you write it this way on the question paper, you know that once you are transferring um, the answers on the answer booklet, you write the correct spelling here. So always use shorthands that are easy to remember. So once you practice, make sure that you are practicing it one shorthand. So for example, in my practice, I usually write government as this. So in a situation where in the examination day, I get an answer to the government. I have to write this on the question paper and then later when I'm transferring my answer on the answer booklet, I write the correct spelling. So you just have to take note of that. This is necessary for um, longer answers. So in the audio, you hear a longer answer like concentration. You can't wait to write this word in full before you think of, I mean, going to um, follow the audio to get your other answers as well. So all you have to do is to get a shorthand for this particular word. So you can write something like C O N, something like this to represent concentration. But as I said, it should be you should write in a shorthand that is easy to remember because there are times you write a word like this, and when it's time for you to transfer your answer onto the answer booklet, you forget about what word it was. So you just have to use words that I mean shorthands that are easily um, to remember. So shorthand skills is one of the skills that will help you um, work within the normalized style for the listening test. So just get to know how to write um, certain words in the shortcut form. Now, the seventh strategy I would want us to look at is using the right equipment. What do I mean by this? You see, once you start to practice the IELTS listening test, don't try to um, use different equipment. That will be different from what you'll be using in the examination day. I always say that um, you can't be a footballer and then be practicing with an orange because you know very well that on the D-Day, you'll be using football. So once you do your practice, use football to practice so that when you get onto the field, it will not be anything new to you. So what I'm saying is that um, with a listening test, you'll be listening to an audio through a headphone. So once you practice, try to get yourself a headphone. So you can practice with the headphone, something like this. This is not an acceptable one, but um, I'm just trying to let you know how the headphone looks like. You can get yourself a headphone and then practice alongside because on the D-Day, you'll be using a headphone. Again, um, with a paper-based test, you see, if it's your interest writing the IELTS listening test on the paper, then once you practice at home, try to print out the um, practice questions and practice alongside. Don't do your practice on the computer, knowing very well that on the D-Day, you'll be using the paper-based test. That would be very dangerous. And the same thing applies to the computer. If you prefer to use the computer, don't, I mean, practice using the paper and then um, you expect to actually do well on the D-Day. So practice alongside your preference. If you want to do a paper-based test while doing your practice, use the paper. If you want to do a computer-based test while doing the practice, use the computer. And then the pencil and pen. Um, it's advisable that you use pencil to actually write your answers because on the examination, they are using pencil to write your answers. So try practicing with a pencil. And uh, um, this is necessary because it helps you to erase fast. I mean, if you write a wrong answer 
or probably if you make a mistake you can easily erase with an eraser and then you are good to go unlike the pen that is actually sticky and the ink like that is very difficult to um, erase so using the right equipment in practice is also one of the strategies to help you attain 8.5 in the ios listening test so as a bonus to you, I want to share with you the 8th strategy which is your handwriting skills. You see most people have failed their IELTS listening test just because of how they wrote. I mean they didn't write legibly and uh, their answers were not clear for marking. So what I want to say is that um, just make sure that whatever you are putting on the answer booklet is of um, clarity and then it's very legible because if it is not seen, the examiner won't mark. And also um, one strategy I inculcated was that I wrote all my answers in capital letters you see there are some of the answers that are proper nouns what this means is that they should start with capital letters and uh, um, sometimes because of the tension and anxiety you do forget to start them with capital letters and it's i mean you can be marked down just because you use i mean a small letter to start a proper noun so what i usually do is that i write all my answers in capital letters so that even if i do forget to write an answer i mean i am unable to identify which is a proper noun or whatsoever i know all my answers are in capital letters and i'm safe so we can also adopt this strategy to help you attain ban 8.5 so at this juncture i strongly believe that i've shared with you all the strategies i used in getting ban 8.5 in the listening test i mean you have to be very careful with the question types your concentration skills must be built your keyword techniques must also be affected here your accent master is also key your short hand skills also works using the right equipment is another strategy spelling skills is um, one good thing you have to know and handwriting skills so if you are able to actually i mean inculcate all this in your practice then you should be very sure that you are getting ban 8.5 just as i had i mean to nine all right i want to assure you that i'll be coming up with strategies that i used in the reading test that is one of the um, so I see the canker that is sitting into the moral fabrics of most IELTS test tickets. And uh, I also had issues with the reading test, but I was able to maneuver my way through. So just watch out for a video on that. Okay, we've come to the end of this video. I want to ask you, did you enjoy the video? If you did, I believe that it will be helpful to someone else. So just do me a favor by sharing this video to as many people as you can. I mean, you can share it to your friends, families, and then other platforms you find yourself. I hope to see you in my next video where I'll be demonstrating to you how to um, tackle the listening test. And uh, I also want to promise you that I'll be coming up with the strategies that help me get the required band score in the reading test. So stay tuned. But before you go, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and then like this channel because I've got tons of good information for you here. And I'm the guy who tells positive stories.